Hey guys, Tyler here, and thanks for checking out this video, and I'm finally getting around to making my 8.3 Marksman Hunter guide, so I hope this guide will help you reach new heights for your Marksman Hunter, whether it be PvP, Mythic Plus, or even into Raiden 8.3. So, let's get started. Mr. Eggplant presents... Alright, like I said, thank you guys for checking out these videos. They're so much fun to put together. It really makes me think about Marksman Hunter, the you know, the one spec that I do love to play in this game. And as if I didn't play Marksman, I probably wouldn't be still be playing. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy these. And if there's any changes to this video after I have recorded it, or to the guide I should say, I will they will be in a pinned comment or in the description of the video, so be sure and check those out. And if you guys want to reach out to me, if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment or uh, just add me on bnet i have my bnet uh, information in the video in the description to do that so i'm going to have it in different sections so please check out the certain section that you're looking for all right so for this first section we're going to talk about the azurite traits that you need to look for as a marksman hunter because if you guys are new to marksman hunter or it's been a while we are heavily reliant on having the correct trait so you really want to strive to have the best possible gear at least azurite trait wise to do well with marksman hunter uh, so the number one this tier is going to be in the rhythm uh, it does uh, whenever you finish your rapid fire which is on a 20 second cooldown it gives you a, an x amount of haste which this one is 744 well that can stack up to three times versus how many you have. So it's basically, it gets up to a small lust every uh, 20 seconds for eight seconds. So you basically have a downtime of 12 seconds on there, uh, which is really nice. From there, that gives you an increased amount of focus regen. It's not as much as it used to be in the past, but it's still a noticeable increase. And then it does your cast speeds are obviously uh, faster, which is important since our aim shot here is going to be what makes all of our other abilities uh, hit that much harder. Uh, as for the next trait is going to be unerring vision. Uh, whenever you're using true shot, you gain X amount of critical strike every second. It stacks up to 10 times and then caps at that for the last five seconds for the total of 15 seconds on your true shot. So I'll just give you a quick example here. I started at 23% base crit, and with three of the true or the unerring visions, you get up to 96%, which is basically almost a guaranteed crit, almost crit cap. Uh, I probably wouldn't run with uh, three of them anymore. I don't really need it, uh, so I would want to drop uh, one unerring vision for in the rhythm. And then last but not least, uh, the focus fire is really nice. Having at least one of these is key. You don't, it goes down as you get more than one. Uh, but the reason it's so important, not only does it do, do that 8,000 extra damage over the duration of your focus, uh, focus fire, uh, but it does give you a 30% chance of every shot, which by the way, it shoots 10 shots, uh, to generate two an additional focus. So you get three instead of one. So it makes my average rapid fire, instead of giving me 10, it's giving me 17.59 over uh, all of uh, Emerald, or about said Emerald Nightmare, <laughs> of uh, Eternal Palace. Uh, so it's very important that you run with that. And then as for our miners, the number one one is of course overwhelming power. Uh, it is just far ahead of everything else. Uh, and then the others would include uh, the Unstable Flames just gives you a, a small amount of crit that stacks up to five times, which is really nice, as well as Elemental Whirl. So I have a piece here that has Elemental Whirl on it. It just gives you a small amount of secondary stats, which uh, Marksman Hunters don't really have any issues with secondary st or having a bad secondary stat because we can take advantage of all of them, which is super nice. All right, so as for your essences, we've got a couple of different essences to choose from here. So I've got my neck out here, level 76 as of uh, uh, the first week of raid, which was super good. Uh, so just for your major, uh, if you're doing single target, condensed life force is far and away the best. Like it, it blows everything else out of the water. If I'm unfortunately, if you can't run with that because you didn't play for Eternal Palace. Uh, other good options uh, would include Crucible of Flame since it does give you two charges and it just does a nice amount of damage and on a 30 second cooldown per charge. You, If you're using this, you just wanna make sure that you don't let it cap. And then each Concentrated Flame has 100% increased damage uh, every cast and then it resets after the third as you see there and then the other one for a uh, single target is going to be world vein resonance and actually this one is probably the best overall because it just gives you so much raw agility which will only increase the damage of everything 
Uh, one downfall is you really want to get the most out of it. You want to be running with more than one person in your raid, uh, primarily because it is uh, you know how far away you are from them can determine if you get uh, credit for them having the world vein resonance but you want to run if like you've got three people in your raid running this and you can stack on them which a lot of fights you can you're just going to just do insane amounts of damage because of all that uh, agility that you have and then as for uh, your AOE uh, purification protocol is really nice. It doesn't have a chance to. It first off stuns all aberrations, which there's a lot of those in raid right now. I actually used the purification protocol on Ilganoth on the Bloods, which did help a lot because th that stun is super nice. And then otherwise, Essence of Focusing Iris because uh, Beam OP. I love it for Mythic Plus. That's what I'm still going to be using for Mythic Plus, uh, which is going to be the Essence of the Focusing Iris. As for your miners, this is where you can kind of pick and choose a little bit. Uh, one that I would say should be a lock is going to be Breath of the Dying. It does an insane amount of damage and gives you that uh, resistance to corruption by 10, uh, which is really nice. I don't have any corruption, corruption gear right now, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes, uh, but it allows you to carry that much more corrupted gear without having to feel the effects of like the eye, the lurker, that sort of thing. As for the others, Crucible of Flame is just a really nice dot. It can stack up to three times. It does 11k, uh, and you don't control it at all. But if it does stack again, it refreshes the timer, which is super awesome because you get that much more uh, out of it. And then others would include the Focusing Iris, Iris passive just because it gives you a small amount of haste since we are running with low haste. Uh, and then my bread and butter is Vision of Perfection because the whole way I play is going to be uh, to get as many true shots out during a fight as possible. That is my ultimate goal. It's why I do such amazing damage in Mythic Pluses as well, uh, just because I have it up like every other pull, because I can whittle it down with my other talents, plus the this Vision of Perfection Miner, to get each one of my true shots like every minute I have a new one. It's like 58 seconds as I can get the cooldown down to, which is amazing for it being the, you know, the big hitter of our build. All right, I kind of mentioned it, but after uh, talking about essences, we have our talents. So we haven't changed any of the talents uh, since like 8.1.5, or 8.1, excuse me. Uh, but the first one's going to be Master Marksman. It just works well with what we're doing with this and calling shots uh, with whittling down the cooldown of our uh, true shot. So aim shot has a 100% chance to reduce the focus cost of your ability. When, whenever you use an aim shot, it empowers your next one to two arcane shots. So you're going hit to hit them 75% harder with it, and it's free. Oh, and by the way, with your level 100 talent, whenever you use that, it lowered the cooldown of your true shot by 2.5 seconds, which is like no joke. Like literally, you can whittle off 10 seconds of this while you're using your true true shot cooldown just in a general fight, since you can usually get right around uh, four aim shots out uh, during that window. Uh, so level 30 is going to be careful aim. It just gives you that 80-20 zone, as you'll hear me uh, refer to it as, uh, where you do 50% more damage with your aim shots uh, when they're above 80 and below 20. So we kind of have two kill shot zones, so to speak. Uh, level 45, uh, for raiding situations, it's almost always natural mending, just because when you're spending, sp spending focus, uh, you lower the cooldown uh, of your exhilaration. Camouflage is also really good for Mythic Plus. Uh, Mythic Plus uh, is, you, you don't have to run with the, the invisibility potions, and it does give you that 2% of your max health every one second. Uh, level 60, uh, Hunter's Mark is good. You just want to make sure and put it on your target whenever you can. If it's got low amount of health or it won't be up very long, it's probably not worth Hunter Marking for the global. Uh, Streamline is good if you're running with heavy haste only. Like if you're running heavy haste machine gun build, uh, the Streamline is probably the way to go. Uh, for level 75, I just use post haste just because it gets me out of roots, that sort of thing. Uh, Born to be wild is situational, like if you need, if you know you're going to need Aspect of the Turtle or Cheetah more often, I would use that. And if you're in Mythic Pluses and you have a lot of humanoids that are going to run, Binding Shot is better, like for example in Toldegore, that sort of thing. As for the level 90, uh, Double Tap is arguably my favorite, uh, just because whenever you use an ability, your next one will instantly do the exact same thing uh, without con consuming focus. And you want to use this on your aim shot when you're above 80 and below 20, and you want to use it exclusively on rapid fire 
any other time. You'll watch some of my videos and I will screw that up and I'm still doing my best to try to uh, get out of the fact that I keep using it on aim shot in the middle of in that 60% uh, so that's something I'm still working on and then level 100 is calling shots these others honestly they're not very good piercing shot is terrible uh, lock and load could have its benefits if you're running a heavy haste build but other than that calling shots is pretty much the way to go Right, so after our talents, uh, we do have my stat build. Uh, so this is what I've been using on raid bots whenever I sim myself. And my stats are going to be uh, agility, then mastery, since mastery increases the damage of all of our abilities. They changed that. It used to say all of your focus spending abilities. So all of your abilities, which I would consider the focusing Azerite Beam to be our ability now, uh, maybe I'm wrong on that, so please leave me a comment below if you uh, think otherwise. Uh, but like a lot of these, like the f like the arcane shots that don't cost focus anymore because they were free because they were, uh, you know, you you used your uh, your master marksman. Because see, it's it's the focus cost would be free, so that would not be technically spinning focus. Where now mastery should uh, help your damage with that. Uh, and then after that, I would do haste to right around 10%. That's just a comfortable medium for me to be able to get my aim shots to 2.3 second cast time. That's where I feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's a good spot for the way I play, where I can easily stop, get an aim shot off, and then uh, keep moving again, because that is kind of the key to Marksman Hunters, making sure you can get that extra aim shot off. That'll be the pretty much the big difference which, from getting a 75% parse in raid uh, to like a 90% is getting those extra aim shots out in the same amount of time. Uh, and then from there, haste and crit are pretty equal. I've been trying to run with a heavier crit build uh, just so I can offset me having only two unerring vision because I want to get right around 70 to 75% crit with unerring vision uh, fully stacked. That's just kind of my goal uh, and my uh, Sims uh, did reflect that I did the most damage, at least in a simulation, with only having uh, two and getting to that threshold of uh, crit. Otherwise, it's pretty much going to be kind of overkill at that point. Like, I probably don't need 96% crit to do high damage. So as for gems and enchants, I personally gem and enchant with mastery. So I have mastery on my rings, I have any of my... Uh, gems are going to be mastery, but you can easily do versatility. Uh, mastery is just significantly cheaper, uh, honestly, than a lot of the versatility because you have to worry about tanks wanting versatility uh, and basically everybody else who are using crazy good trinkets, uh, Azerite abilities, you know, dots, that sort of thing that come from their gear that not that would not be increased by our mastery. Uh, and then for your weapon, uh, the everybody would agree with this one, is force multiplier. It is a little bit more expensive, uh, but it is well worth it because it does uh, give you more of your main stat, which is agility, and then of your secondary stat. I believe it picks the highest one, uh, so it's going to be mastery uh, for me. And then also I did want to talk about just real quick uh, for our consumables. So we'll go ahead and show you here real quick. Uh, I've been using the Potion of Unbridled Fury. They're super cheap to make and they just do, you do an extra amount of damage. And it does last a minute where your superior battle potion of agility only lasts for 25 seconds. So I would pick one of these. Honestly, the, the Furies last longer. That's one reason I picked them over the agilities. I think they actually use the exact same mats too. Uh, but for potions, obviously you're using your agility potions. The, the greater Flask of the Currents is the best, but Flask of the Currents is great in a pinch. Plus if you're an alchemist like me and you find the random uh, cauldrons around, a lot of times they give you these lower potions or flasks, which is what I use. And then like I said, for rings, I do mastery, but versatility is equally good, especially if you're running heavy like on use trinkets for example like ash veins razor coral which we're about to talk about here in just a second so i did want to talk about real quick i will be putting out a video uh, for what the gear i'm going to be looking for like the exact pieces and where you find them uh, that's just like a my personal bis uh, gear uh, but uh, some of these trinkets are just so much better than everything else 
Uh, so we'll have to actually go back into Raid here to the Eternal Palace to find our BIS trinket, which is Ashvane's Razor Coral, because it does damage whenever you apply the Razor Coral and you periodically uh, add a stack to that, which when you rip it out, gives you a large amount of crit, which is super important because you basically, you use your, your true shot. You, or for, the, for example, when you first start, you do your opener and then you put on your Razor Coral. So while you're whittling down the cooldown of your true shot to get up to the next one, you're putting stacks on the boss. Just before you use your true shot, you rip the Razor Coral out and you already have a lot more crit for the entire duration of your true shot when you're already getting more crit as well uh, with your uh, Unearing Vision. It's super good. I don't have one myself. I need to talk to Glitch to see if we can go back in there and get one of those for me at least at a 430 uh, 445 or 455 would be better obviously especially because of the agility uh, but other good trinkets include gale collars boon down here you get that out of shrine of the storm just gives you a small actually not a small it's a large amount of haste but a small area you have to stand in so if you know a fight and you know that you can stand somewhere for a little bit of time it's amazing uh, another one is going to be the Dead Eye Spyglass that I'm currently using just because it stacks up crit. You can't control it, but any crit, any time for us is good. Uh, there's no bad time to have a crit. <laughs> so uh, another one would be Harlan's Loaded Dice because it just gives you a random combination of your secondary stats, not counting versatility. And it did, both of these just give you a large amount of agility. Other ones real quick, uh, they do include another one from Raid, which is going to be off Queen Ashara, which is Ashara's Font of Power. It just gives you an absurd amount of primary stat of your agility, and that's at 415, mind you. Uh, but you do have to kind of wind up, quote, for four seconds, and it does have a longer cooldown. Uh, but it is well worth it if you can get a socketed, like a large item level version of it. And then the last but not least is going to be the Lustrous Golden Plumage, just because it gives you a large amount of versatility. That's over 10% damage worth of versatility uh, just out of this trinket. And that's pretty much situational. Like if you know this thing needs to die right now, uh, the versatility trinket might be the way to go. And since this one is 440, it gives me a large amount of agility as well. All right, and then the last section here is going to be about corruptions. Now, I don't have any corruptions at all right now. I have no corrupted gear uh, whatsoever. Uh, but the corruption you want is going to be the infinite stars because you can get more than one as well. So that will be the corruption on an item. It does give you a lot of corruption, though, for that one. So I don't know how well you could stack multiples of it because I think it's like plus 50 corruption. But with your back piece, it gives me 20% corruption resistance, if you're rank 6 at least. And then if you're running with the Breath of, breath of the Dying, uh, you get an additional 10. So that would only be 20 corruption that you'd actually be carrying on you, which is much easier to deal with than, you know, let's say 30, 40, 50, up to 100. Uh, so you want to go with the Infinite Stars because it does a large amount of damage and can uh, stack up to 10 times. Uh, the Gushing Wound is also good. It gives you it's just a small... It's not really a small. It's, it's a dot, uh, but you can't control it. It is on one of your... Uh... All right, and then the last bit here is going to be uh, my rotation for my opener. Uh, just because the opener is really important for us to burst high to start off and then to just kind of... Uh, fill in the gaps as the fight progresses because we uh, with marksmen tend to burst fall off burst fall off well we've done a really good job uh, with this build of kind of filling in those gaps uh, so let's kind of go ahead and uh, talk about that real quick so first off I'm going to get rid of Brutus he's fun but he lowers my damage uh, since we don't have lone wolf and we want to make sure uh, and have that so while lone wolf is ticking up there I'm going to go ahead and talk about this real quick so you want to make sure and put Hunter's Mark on the target. That is kind of what you want to do, especially if it is a raid boss. Uh, from there, we're going to use Double Tap at 10 seconds on the timer, uh, just to keep that on cooldown because it does, you know, it takes 15, or it can be up for 15 seconds. Uh, at five seconds, I'm going to misdirect my tank, uh, and then at three seconds, I'm going to use my Potion of Unbridled Fury or any consumable, followed by my uh, aim shot. I will go aim shot, then I will go rapid fire, uh, arcane shot, uh, my racial if I have one, and then here, uh, let me change this real quick just for you guys to show single target, will be the condensed life force. Uh, from there, I will come back over here and I'll do true shot, aim shot, arcane shot, aim shot, arcane shot, rapid fire, aim shot, 
arcane shot, aim shot, arcane shot, and then I should be right at the end of my my window, and then I will finish it up with trying to get a last minute empowered arcane shot in there uh, to get my damage up. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. All right, so I'll have to say that wasn't too bad. Uh, I think I saw, what, almost 75K? Uh, that's kind of a little on the lower side. If you have your uh, your lust up and I have food buffs, that sort of thing, or even attack power buffs, I've been getting over 100K on a lot of these uh, pulls, which has been really good, especially in raid. Uh, Vexiona ended up doing like almost 55k for the entire fight, which was really good and actually kind of surprised myself on that. Uh, so with that rotation, that really does just kind of help you burst to start off the the fight on a high note. And then as for the the uh, rotation for just overall, uh, there's not really a rotation anymore. It's more of uh, a priority system. So you want to make sure if you're in the 80-20 zone on above 80, below 20, use tap, double tap on aim shot. Otherwise, use it on rapid fire. You want to use rapid fire on cooldown, and you also want to uh, use like your rapid fire just before you go using your true shot so you're already having an additional amount of haste on top of the true shot and also you don't want to use your true shot if you're like below 50 or 60 focus you want to be close to to focus cap uh, from there whenever you use an aim shot you want to make sure and use the arcane shot empowered procs that is a key because that otherwise you're if you're not using them, you're just putting uh, extra damage and you're leaving it on the table and you don't want to do that. And as for that, uh, if you want, or if you're close to like the 20% zone, let's say you're like at 23% on the boss or 25%, hold off on using your true shot until you're in that 80-20 zone to get the most out of it, uh, otherwise use it on cooldown as well. All right, well, this has been a fun video, guys. If you guys have any questions or you think of things that can help me be a better hunter or help the community, please let me know. Leave me a, a good constructive criticism if you don't agree with some things and let me know uh, what you think would help out uh, other people that are trying to learn Marksman Hunter because I really think we're in a good spot for 8.3. I'm excited for both Mythic Plus and Raid. I, I always say I'm excited, but I have really been looking forward to this raid for a while. Uh, maybe it's just because I've been on the shelf from raiding for like the last five months and it's something new. Uh, but please leave me some feedback. I'd love to hear that. Uh, let me know how this has helped you. Let me know what I can do better. And then also, you know, just be a good community and let's help each other uh, be the best uh, marksman hunters we can be. So thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And until my next live stream or video, I'll see you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.